Slurped it up. Welcome to a, another video, my Gs. How are you doing? Uh, I've made a ARP for you guys today. It's also another free one uh, because normally I design patches for uh, like drum and bass and stuff, but this is a bit more sound design, sci fi. Definitely can use it in drum and bass as well, though. Uh, but I've designed the patch at 140 BPM, which is unusual for me. But I wanted to create like a really nice sort of sci fi ARP. I've named it the Lab Coat ARP. Because I imagine that when you use it, you'll probably be running around a lab, like sort of spilling elixirs and stuff. Anyway. I love, love, love this ARP. Maybe my favourite one I've made so far within the synth that is known as Vital. You know the synth that's called Vital? You know the Vital synth? You know the free synth? You know the... Anyway, uh, that would be cool like, if that was edited, wouldn't it? But I'm not editing anymore, I can't be bothered. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so let's talk about the patch and how I made uh, the like kind of melody to it which was quite simple because basically it's just the whole note is just one midi note you know you can glide up and down the keyboard it's just going to play one version of the arp so that means doesn't it that all of the notes are made within vital and that's interesting isn't it because there's no arpeggiator section per se um, Per se, portemonnaie, shepherd's pie. So, uh, what I did to do it was I made uh, this crazy step sequenced pattern in the LFO and basically pitched everything by ear. And if you're wondering what notes they are, I just don't know. I've got no idea. But, you know, watch Stranger Things. You know, I keep going on about that. I just finished season four, so I'll finally stop talking about it soon. Um, but yeah, if you don't if you don't know how to make a cool sci-fi ARP, watch that and listen to the soundtrack, and then you kind of just feel have the feeling of what notes should be where, you know. So it's got this that like, tension to it. And that tension is important for like when you're trying to save the world. So make sure that you actually end up saving the world to the right soundtrack. Now, won't you, my geez? Anyway. Um, so, let's talk about the actual sound design, shall we? I used a lot of effects. There's a lot going on in this patch. Uh, you can download it for free down below. I don't ask for anything back in return. All I want you to do is make sure you wear like a lab coat while you're using it, uh, just for your safety hazard, for a safety hazard. So, um, yeah, so so the modulations then. We've got two, two let's say, so yeah, that's a glitchy one. That's a bit of randomization. Yeah, we've got two main LFOs that you need to really, really pay close attention to, my Gs. So, the LFO 2 is the overall um, amplitude and the, the rhythm, you know, so it's at one eighth. So everything's going dum 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 on the LFO 2. So everything that has to move in terms of its sort of volume and amplitude, we're going to track to here. And then you can see there's loads of modulations and that's because I've also put little tweaks to the, the filter positions as well to, to give the tone of that. Up movement and then the LFO one is basically the um, melody uh, pattern in the ARP so everything everything down at zero is will just be playing what your what the key on your note you're pressing is and then these ones that come up uh, if they went up all the way to the top it would be 12 semitones because I've tracked these um, yeah I've tracked these different transpose oscillator modulations up by exactly 12 so right at the top would be one octave so sort of in between there we're going to be using some of the notes that are higher up than the root note so obviously we start off with a triangle wave here and just to like give you a practical example of what I was just saying if you haven't fallen asleep um, please don't fall asleep my geez this is very importante muy muy importante tengo la pampara prendida uh, LFO2 is uh, going to be doing the whole like amplitude, right? So I've got that on the level here. So it's going all the way up. And then the LFO1 simply goes on the transpose here, up 12. 
So those are the two modulations that, that happen. And we do that on all of the oscillators. I think I've only used two in the end. Or have I used three? I can't remember now. There you go. I've just had to fix this because one of the LFOs wasn't quite right. There we go. And so with, in terms of the actual sound, it's quite basic to be fair. It's like triangle, triangle with a bit of smear on and a bit of unison and then a sine wave underneath a bit lower for a bit of extra bass and a bit of FM from this one into this one. Pretty randomly just sort of chosen, you know. Just as long as you've got a nice combination of, of like waveforms that kind of work together. Sample section on here, a bit of natural high end as well. And again, filtering the low end of that out, so it's just the high part. And that, so that they're all tracked to the level on the LFO2, and they're all tracked to the pitch as well, except for the sample, because that's obviously just texture. So the next thing I've done is, uh, yeah, like I said, try to give, put a bit more character and tone into the into the sound. So I've done this on the filters. So on this one, I've just done uh, oscillator one through this phaser filter. And you see here, I've got the LFO2. So this is, the, again, our main uh, volume envelope uh, slash LFO is, is just being tracked to the cutoff. So it's going to go up and down a little bit. Just to like, sh yeah, like I said, shape the, the actual kind of sound of it. So that's basically everything that's going on if I I believe I'm right in the first section. And like I said before, I had a bit of randomization. It's just really small amounts on like the, the D tune, a tiny bit. You can see what they are here. Uh, that's not really being used, I don't think. A little bit on the smear, a little bit on the FM, just to keep things a little bit moving, a little bit of extra detail. So that's the main part then. And yeah. I'll talk about how you can, because this is very easy to draw the saw down and it's at one eighth, right? But I'll talk about how I drew this in because you might not know. Um, basically, if you go over here, you can you can select step and that'll, uh, yeah, it'll give you this like nice step bar here. You have to press, press on so you can sort of adjust it. And then you basically can, uh, actually it's kind of gone back now, but you, I had to create a grid that was at 32. So we bring this up and it will create the X grid, give you lots of uh, extra kind of columns. And then now when you when you adjust your steps, it's all gonna be in time on like a 32 bar kind of, or 32 split grid. So so now, now you can just, you know, select in between each sort of column and then bring it up and you know it's gonna be in time with the rest of your ARP. So why don't we add in another little nugget somewhere that could fit. So, so, you know, when I was designing it, if I put a random one in here, we'll see what happens. Yeah, see, I don't like the, the actual note there. And a, a lot of the time I like to sort of leave it, you know, running at the main like E, like the root note, and then just have these little parts that come up and down every now and again to add a bit of tension here and there. So I like what I've done. This is kind of already my finished result. So to improve it now, I mean, maybe I can fit one more in somewhere. Yeah, so that's that's okay having that one in there we'll leave that one in for you guys as well but if you want to change the actual uh melody of the arp just do it in here so just like take down a point and bring up a point and yeah just kind of listen listen as you roll roll out the arp and less is less is more in a lot of uh, cases you don't have to have like loads of different notes at once you know having just the right ones in the right gaps is going to create the right kind of effect that you want but yeah, I like this. So that's my main sort of part on this part of the, of the synth. Obviously, the, the glide is on the gato, so you could, you know, you can play it any any note. And, you know, if, if we speed it up to like a drum and bass speed as well, I can play it here with my drums as well, perhaps. Uh, it's going to be a bit, a bit mental, but...
So obviously you, you can get it to fit, uh, but yeah, for this tutorial I was designing it already at 140, so I'm gonna keep it there for now and just play it on its own again. Next up we're gonna do is we're gonna add on the effects and like really enhance the sound now. So I've got another filter here and I'm using loads of filters. So I've actually used the two here, then I'm using one in the effects and then I'm also gonna use the phaser as a filter later as well because I really wanted to shape the sound as much as possible. And so again here I've got like another like phaser positive filter so I'm shaping the, the, the mid-range tone again here. Because it, it, it starts to make those, you know, random saw waves and triangle waves that were kind of okay into something a bit more like, uh, I don't want to say shaped again, but shaped. Uh, but it, not just like shaping it for the sake of tidying it up. It's like finding the, the little spots where the tones just sound like more interesting and cool and emphasizing those. So that's why I'm doing lots of little filter, um, little adjustments here. And again, they're, they're sort of tracked to my LFO, so they kind of pop up and down a little bit. Yeah, so that's pretty nice. Then I've got a chorus, and this is also on the LFO as well. So it's actually gonna, we're gonna freeze the, the, the voices, essentially. And then it's gonna go, uh, the delays are gonna be modulated so that they're gonna move in time with the ARP again. Just mixing that in. Then compressor, this is a cool little thing as well, because what I've done on this on this uh, compressor, which I don't usually do, is I've modulated the release. So I've put the release back on my LFO2 as well, because if you listen uh, when it's up all the way at the top here. It's kind of a lot louder when you have the release, you know, low. So to give a bit more dynamic flavor, put on the LFO, brought it back so it starts low and then goes from low to high. So it starts at the loud point and then goes to the quiet point on the release setting. So that will give it a bit more of a sort of punchy feeling, the up. That's just mixed in again as an effect. So it's like a parallel kind of effect. And then we've got a delay, which is going to add a nice tail to the ARP now. So it's it's always going at sort of eighth notes, right? So I wanted to fill the space in between the notes a little bit. So I chose 16th, 16th notes, put it on stereo mode, and then bring down the mix. So we just fill in that those little gaps in the middle just very, very slightly. Just gives the whole ARP more of a full finished sound. barely notice it. it still it doesn't take away from the overall groove but it just fills the space a little bit just to kind of yeah beef it up a bit next up bit of distortion nothing crazy there then i've got some eqing and yeah a little bit of mid-range a bit of high end then again here i've used the phaser as a filter so we basically freeze the the phaser so it doesn't move around randomly we take the offset all the way to zero so it's kind of just one shape basically becomes a filter at this point. And then I've literally just modulated the kind of cutoff here. Again, similar to what I was doing before, like choosing a cool tone using the filter in the mid-range, then moving it around a little bit, blending it back in to create a little bit more, yeah, nice sort of, yeah, com com not even complexities, but uh, just to like pick out the next little part of the sound that I can emphasize in the in the kind of frequencies in the in the mid range. That's pretty cool around there. Finish off, touch of reverb, and it's good to go. Now what you can do if you want to tighten up or loosen the overall up, you can just go to the saw here on the LFO2 and just sort of bring up the curve up or down. If you, want, if you wanted a tighter kind of feeling, I wish you could sort of modulate this, this curve, you know, but I mean, it's very easy just to drag up and down and find your res, res, resired, desired uh, spot.
couple of other things are done. I've done some um, uh, anything on the advanced. I don't think really think so. Uh, no, the other thing I've done is I've done a bit of macros, and this first one is the base, and this is where I've just changed the filter cutoffs a little bit, and yeah, the filter like sort of positions and the phase of position. And then if we boost it up, it's gonna give a bit more emphasis to like the bass sort of harmonics. I like it around there, you know? And then I've got this one other extra little thing, uh, which is called the glitch, which is gonna give a little bit of a uh, sort of volume glitch in the art progression. So if I turn that up. So maybe all the time, it's a little bit extreme, but maybe if you used it sort of occasionally. Could be pretty cool. It becomes a, then there, at that point, it's becoming a bit more of a show off the sound design uh, effect rather than like a classic like sci-fi ARP, you know? Uh, but yeah, that glitch mode, how I made that was I basically took the LFO3 and mapped it to the phase on the LFO2. So that's the um, the slider position. So in a roundabout way, you know, that the main ARP is always going at eighth notes, but occasionally when this LFO3 reaches this point here, it's gonna change the position of, the, of that saw down movement, and it's gonna just mess up the kind of timing of it just for a brief moment. So, so just when it goes up and down here, it's gonna like change the position and mess with the timing. So if I turn it up again, you'll see. If I, if I stereo it as well, it will do it left and right differently. So the timing is gonna be very different, but it kind of sounds cool as well like that. So that's up to you if you want to use it stereo mode or normal mode. They have two different kind of timing rhythmical effects. But yeah, it's a free patch for you guys. I hope you will enjoy it. Uh, like I said, make sure you wear your lab coat while you're wearing it. Uh, also, I uh, hate to plug myself, but if you want to support me any more than by just watching the video, uh, you can join my Patreon down below, hop into my Discord, say hi in there. I'm usually around for a friendly chat. And uh, you can also sign up for my mentorship directly from my website. I offer one-on-one -on -one lessons, pretty happy to teach people of all genres and yeah, love to get to know people and yeah, just make a bit of music together. Always good fun. And yeah, that's about it for today. Stick around. Uh, I'm going to be doing some more sound design videos, probably continuing with Vital for a while longer because I feel like there's a lot more to explore with the synth. Still, even though I've been using it for a while, I still think there's some great uh, sounds that we can make and I am happy to share those with you. And yeah, thanks for being a part of the sound design journey. Peace out guys, have a wicked day. Don't do anything I wouldn't.